Hi, my name is Plony Pinnings and in this video I will talk about the main result of my paper that is coming out in PLOS Computational Biology in June of 2012. People who are infected with HIV are usually treated with a combination of three drugs. These three drugs make it almost impossible for the virus to replicate and so the amount of virus in the body of the patient will go down. And that's a good thing because less virus means a healthier patient. However, in a small subset of patients, resistance will evolve. So the virus becomes resistant against the drugs, and then the virus can grow again. So on this graph, there will be time in this direction, and viral load, so that's the amount of virus in the blood of the patient on the y-axis. And so initially, the amount of virus is high, but then if treatment is started, the amount of virus will go down, unless resistance evolves, in which case it will go up again. In a study in 2006, researchers found that in the first year of treatment, in 9% of the patients, this happened. Resistance evolved and treatment failed. In the other 91% of the patients, treatment was successful during the first year of treatment. When treatment fails due to drug resistance, the virus has changed. Initially, the virus is susceptible, but here, the virus is resistant. And this is due to one or a few mutations. And what I wanted to know is whether the mutations that are responsible for this resistance originated during treatment or before treatment. So there are two options. Either the mutation occurred here before treatment started, was undetectable for a while, and then took over the population and led to resistance. Or the mutation occurred during treatment and immediately took over the population and caused resistance. In this case, we call it a new mutation. In this case, we call it a pre-existing mutation. And I wanted to know, for this 9% of the patients, in how many of them were pre-existing mutations responsible, and in how many of them were new mutations responsible. In this study, where they found the 9%, they also followed these 91% of the patients during the second year of treatment. And they found that during the second year of treatment, in 3% of them, resistance evolved. And in the other 97% of them, resistance did not evolve. When they followed the 97% in the third year of treatment, again, in 3% of them, the virus became resistant. And so that suggests that the 3% is a constant, and it's due to these new mutations that can occur even during treatment. And that means that out of that 9%, probably 6% is due to pre-existing mutations and 3% is due to these new mutations. The 6% is mainly determined by the, the amount of virus that's present before treatment is started. The population size of the virus here is very large. And in a large population, a lot of mutations happen, so it's likely that at least some of the viral particles already have resistance during this time. Later on during treatment, the viral population size will go down, and so it becomes less likely that mutations occur, and it becomes harder for the virus to escape. However, when patients interrupt treatment, the virus can grow again. So if this patient had started treatment here, the viral load will go down. But then if he or she interrupts treatment, the amount of virus will go up again. And after an interruption of about one month, the amount of virus will be the same as it was before treatment ever started. So now if treatment is started again, well hopefully uh, the amount of virus will go down again. But it may be possible that drug-resistance mutations occur during this time 
and they may cause trouble here and they may lead to resistance. So I used data from clinical trials to try to estimate the probability that drug resistance evolves due to one of those longer interruptions. And I found that this probability is 6%. So that is exactly the same number as what I found here. And you may not be very surprised because I just told you that the amount of virus here is the same as it was before treatment. So what I have found is that starting of treatment is risky for drug resistance. And this is true for when treatment is started for the very first time. And it is also true when treatment is started after an interruption of a few weeks. And so this means that if we want to prevent the evolution of drug resistance, we need to focus on these risky moments, the start of treatment. So one option may be to start treatment with a different kind of drugs that will just reduce the population size, but that are not very likely to lead to resistance. And these drugs may be drugs that are not very good for long-term treatment, but they may be useful in the beginning, and then when the viral population is small, treatment can continue with the standard drugs and this will make it less likely that the virus evolves resistance due to these pre-existing mutations.